Having ridden the Team Honda build base bikes today, it was a real pleasure. And uh, I can totally see now why, when anybody steps onto that team, how they seem to up their game and progress because the bikes are that good. It's taken a long time for, for a four power, Ryan Thorpe and Dave, to get the correct combination. And they seem to have definitely got the correct combination now. First of all, Honda uh, production bikes, they, they're progressing, they're getting better. Um, and they, they seem to be easier to make faster. And when you're at the point in the end, you know, these riders, they do require faster bikes. Riding both bikes today, Tommy Searle and Jake Nichols, um, that was an interesting test in itself, but also as well, having the opportunity to ride a production bike against those bikes and comparing, that was, a, that was an eye opener and it was something that I really liked and uh, I'm glad that I experienced that. Also as well, Stephen Clark riding his 250 against a production bike as well seeing the benefits and seeing the way that the team is moving forward with that bike and how they're, how they're developing that bike. We just try and tailor the bike to the rider, really. Um, this year, again, with a 2020 250, we've started with a better um, package than we had in 19. Um, Honda have made some good improvements, which we've gone on again from. So 250 engine, obviously, everyone's looking for power in that class in MX2. Um, we, we ask the riders where they want the power, where they can be improved over the standard bike. Um, we work with crankshafts, camshafts, um, EFI systems, um, just to build a package for what they want, really. Steven's not a rever, he doesn't rev the bike. Um, he suits the Honda well. Um, the Honda has good torque um, compared to some of the other bikes, um, so we can, we can make the power in the bottom and in the mid. He can hook the gears, um, doesn't necessarily need the rev. Um, although our bike is decent on the, on the RPM, um, he, he generally uses more in the mid. The peak power um, is a fairly good increase over, over the stock one. Um, but like I said, uh, the majority of our gain is in the mid, um, which is tailored to the rider. Suspension in Stephen's bike is shower B kit, um, which is pretty much the same system as the production suspension. Um, it's different color. Um, the setting for um, Stephen's bike has been put in by Ian at Moto33. Um, yeah, we're running extra clamps. Um, our ECU is a Vortex that we use, um, that we develop in-house. Wheels, we're using Talon, um, Talon hubs. We always use them. We have for many years now. Um, we're using uh, XL rims this year for the first time. Um, chain sprockets is RK chains, um, Talon sprockets. Um, everything else chassis-wise. Uh, he's just genuine Honda. Um, we all know that it's, it's potentially a little bit down on power, but it offers so much more than just, just power. Bike spec quite, quite a bit different. You know, Clark, he's got some injuries, so he has these uh, bars and stuff like that all set a little bit unique. Uh, he's got some injuries to his wrist and he feels that uh, the bars, having the bars curved a certain way and positioned in a certain way with his levers, that, that all helps. His bike, uh, suspension, suspension wise, it's been spec'd in America, so he, he's got a he's got a setting that he that he prefers that he was running out there that he's currently using in the bike at the moment. For me, it was quite hard, quite firm and stiff, but yeah, it worked out on track. Uh, it did get the odd kick here and there, um, maybe a little bit nervous in some places, but all in all, in all, it certainly encouraged you to go fast and push, and that's where you got the most from the suspension. Engine wise, the bike had a, a unique power, so. After speaking to Ryan, you know, it, it was apparent that they had to work in a specific area and they knew that the strengths of the Honda, so, and the strengths were the mid-range. So all they wanted to do was, was try to work on the mid-range uh, and get the power delivery right and the throttle connection right. That was interesting in itself. I was also quite interested in how high the bike does rev. So the bike, I think it revs at like 14.8, just under 15,000 RPM, which is a high number. The bike doesn't just sign off there either. I did hang it out a few times just to see if the power was making power at the peak rpm and i've got to say it didn't just sign off it ran a little bit longer than than i expected that's for sure but it wasn't where you needed to ride the bike so you needed to be riding the bike and just leaving it in third and letting the motor do the work for me it was a pleasure to ride and it certainly was an upgrade over over the stock bike then then speaking to ryan and seeing what the differences are you know he's got um he's got a second injector that, that seems to be working really well 
Um, he's got a different piston. They've got their own billet cam. Um, and then there's a lot of different things that obviously they, they don't want to, they don't want to reveal. But one of the things what was interesting, what he did mention to me is, is that they've, um, they've been working closely and uh, developed their own, their own crank. And they've actually got a patent on the crank. Uh, and it's only for the build base team. Um, I did a start on the bike as well. I was impressed with how the bike, you know, how it jumped out of the gate and just really accelerated down the straight. And then when I was riding the bike, uh, when I was riding the bike, I was thinking to myself, okay, so am I a lot faster on this bike than I was on the production bike? You know, would it, would it make people faster just riding this bike? And the answer to that question is yes, because of the amount of power that the bike produces and the way that it's delivered, you know, you really, you really do work the bike and, and just let the, let the engine just pull and, uh, and, and drive from out, out of the turns. The benefits of this crank is, is that um, you've got more motion, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit heavier. So uh, on the production bike, sometimes when you come into the turn, and you, and you did go onto the inside, you really had to kind of uh, keep the revs up. You couldn't just drop onto the throttle, otherwise the bike could just lag a little bit. Um, didn't feel that on Steven's bike. Steven's bike, you know, you, you come in, uh, you kept the revs up a little bit more and, and the bike just did really just rip out the turn. Also as well, when you was landing, I really did feel the, the, the forward motion on the bike when you, when you landed, it really did accelerate and, and push forward. And back to back in the bikes, that was one of the benefits that I noticed of the team bike. It did push and excel on the landing. Not to say that the production bike didn't, but it just felt like maybe it was a little bit slower in picking up. Uh, watching Tommy ride around today, I think he put in uh, one of the fastest track times that's that's ever been on, on the track today jumping on his bike and riding it that was a it was an enjoyable ride 450 um has a lot of power probably enough for 99 percent of the riders out there um, what we try and do is make the, the power usable um, this year we've got two 450 riders um, both of their setups are very different engine wise um, got one that's very smooth very easy to ride one that's very aggressive um, and very very sharp but again that's how they wanted the bikes they've tested all winter they're happy with that yeah so we're changing the, the crankshaft weighting um, the compression ratios between the two bikes and um, yeah the fuel injection system both the 450s um, are running again the B-kit shower um, the settings by Mark Eastwood who's developed that chassis for years now with us um, he's done a great job both the guys are really happy we're using recluse clutches in all of our bikes and in the 450 we just use the clutch pack kit um, and everything else is genuine Honda very rarely do does a Honda have a problem it can it can do um, as can any any bike but at, especially at racing level but we try and make everything as reliable as we can and um, use the best products we can amazed me how much energy I had still when I was riding that bike. You know, it was one of those bikes that you just got on and it just oozed confidence straight away. So you, you really did feel like you wanted to get a little push on and, and, you, and the bike allowed you to get a push on. Power overall, it's an upgraded power. It, it, you know, it didn't feel like it had any kind of dips or hits. It was just, it was a power that was delivered to the ground perfectly and there was bundles of it. The bike is, was made more power than, than stock. Um, and certainly, I'd say right from the get-go, you know, if you were looking at it on the dyno, it certainly is going to be a stock, a stock bike. The way that it's delivered to the ground, again, it just feels like an upgrade. So it really does give you confidence because it's not unsettling. There's no surprises. It doesn't give you a surprise when you come in and, 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 and roll on the throttle. You know, it really does just drive out the turns and it certainly clocks up the meters in, in a straight line. It's a bike that feels like if you want to get a push on, you know, you can get a push on. It's not gonna, it's not gonna bite you because it seems like you can't um, override that bike. It doesn't unsettle and it doesn't give you a kick in the ass. The team behind the rider is what really helps a rider um, excel and push forward. Um, and they really are behind their riders. So whatever requirements they need, 
you know, they meet those needs. Um, if they want to try something, it's an open house. Both riders can share um, the same data, try the same things. They've all got the same options. Tommy and Jake, between themselves, they've, they've got a few little different preferences that they've changed and had some different little tweaks. The way that Jake's bike delivers its power compared to Tommy's bike. But overall, the bikes in themselves is just, um, is, it's, it's an upgrade. And I certainly felt that my riding game today after riding those bikes against the production bikes, that my game had been lifted. So Mark Eastwood's done the suspension on, on, on both of these bikes. The suspension's a little bit different. Um, Jake's, his front forks, they seem to hold up just a little bit more. That, that's his preference, that's what he likes. Tommy seems to just be a little bit softer just up on the top, but both of them have got a really good um, action. And, uh, and you're kind of, you're splitting airs on, on which one you'd like because you know one's a little bit better in one, in, in one section of the track and one's a, a little bit better in another section of the track. But the suspension certainly isn't uh, in question, you know, when you're riding the bikes. They don't surprise you. They, they just give you confidence and you're just pushing around, you know, whether you want to push into the paces of the jumps and, and uh, whip it or you, you're coming into a couple of the braking bumps. You certainly can charge a few of the ruts a little bit more and it seems to just hold up through the term. Jake prefers the bike to hit a little bit more. Uh, he just wants his engine just to, just to pull just a little bit more so it's a little bit more throttle sensitive. You can certainly feel that when you're, when you're riding the two, when I back to back to two. Tommy's bike all in all, it seemed to be a little bit smoother, a little bit more stretched out throughout the power range, where Jake's one just seemed to have that little bit more of a response, and a little bit more of a hit. Watching Jake when he rides, it seems like he just goes out onto track, hooks up into third gear, and then spends most, most of his efforts hitting all of his marks. Tommy, he's a different rider. He just seems to want to hang off it a little bit then the engine seems to allow him to do that. On Jake's one, you know, if you, if you do get a little bit, if you do get a little bit throttle happy, then, then the bike does, you know, it does bite hard and it does hit. Both bikes are an absolute pleasure to ride. Both of them just felt awesome to ride in it and you could really feel the benefits of the team development on them bikes over a production bike. It seems that the team are just making both riders really happy at the moment, giving them exactly what they want and, it, and it's an open book.